Oh. Yes, hi. Good morning, 11 o'clock. <coughs> Welcome to our presentation, the OpenStack and Cars, the OpenStack journey of the Volkswagen Group. My name is Holger. I'm responsible for the IT infrastructure and the cloud project in the Volkswagen Group. And uh, beside me on the stage is Tillman. Tillman is uh, our IIS guy, I would say. Tillman is responsible for the on-premise installation of our OpenStack <coughs> solution. First of all, OpenStack and Cars, uh, for sure, I would say something about Cars. Uh, the Volkswagen Group is a group of 12 successful brands with different portfolios. We not just have cars, we also have Audi, you know that, we Bentley, Bugatti, we have also motorbikes, Ducati, Lamborghini, we also build trucks and buses with MAN, Porsche as well, Scania will, belongs to the group, Seat, Skoda, VW and VW light commercial vehicles. Um, the last guys are with these fancy buses that I have. I love these cars. Yeah, I have three kids, so I need this. Okay, you see, we have a huge portfolio on uh, products and um, we are located all around the world. We have 167 locations in the world. We have more than 600,000 employees in the group and we produce nearly 10 million cars per year. That means per day we produce 45,000 cars per day. We not just produce them, we also sell them. Awesome, yeah. And you can imagine that you need a lot of IT support to uh, support our core business from today, but this business will be changed in the future. future. Because we are living in the age of disruption. You as IT guys, you know that. We have disruption, OpenStack is one of them, and we are familiar with them. But in the automotive industry, disruption are not so usual during the last years. Uh, yeah, that's it. But now what happened, uh, the, uh, the speed of innovation are increasing dramatically. I will give you some short samples. <coughs> First of all, sustainability. That means you all, uh, who have electric car in this room? Please raise your hand. Two electric cars, three electric cars. Three. I'm, I'm sure when we are staying here in five years, that will be a, a other picture. That means, first of all, we have to reinvent uh, or we have to develop new electric cars. Um, that sounds very easy, but you have to imagine we have a lot of developers. They developed engines and gearboxes. You never need that, or you need other engines, but you don't never need gearboxes in the future. And we have to bring these guys to a new way that means they have to change their, I will not say their mind, but their knowledge. Yeah, we need that for the future to develop these cars, but we have to also change it for these guys. Yeah. And the next thing is urbanization. When I was 18, I want to own a car. So it was awesome, yeah? I was very proud of them. I can t tell you everything uh, regarding this car, how many horsepower they have, and so on. And I was really proud to own a car. I'm sure when you go now to Barcelona City and ask an 18-year-old guy, uh, do you want to own a car? I'm sure that the mindset are changed a little bit. And yeah, now they want to want a mobile or something like that, but they want to be mobile. This is the issue, yeah? They don't want to really own a car, but they want to use a shared mobility solution. And for us as a car manufacturer, it is a, a challenge to offer new business models based on that. We will shift from a car manufacturer to a mobility provider in the future. And for that, we need new business models. And for that, for these new business models, we need new IT solutions. Last thing, digitalization. Today, who have a uh, self-driving car in this room? OK. Today, most of you are driving There's cars. There's one right? Tesla owner, apparently. No, no. I, 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 uh, really, really self-driving cars. <laughs> uh, we, I don't talk about a Tesla or something like that. We, uh, I had the, the, the chance on the, on the uh, test track to drive in a self-driving car. And it was really awesome and uh, afraid also. But uh, really, really awesome to have the feeling. And we will give uh, people, they are not 
uh, mobile by its own today it's a possibility in the future. For instance, when you, who of you have kids that bring them to the school every morning? Perfect, you know that you have to park in front of school and fight with the other parents to find the parking slot and leave them around. How does it, uh, uh, or we want to give you the chance that you set your, your kids in a car, in a self-driving yeah, self car, and set them to the school. And this car will do that. And that was some of the ideas for the future, and also oh, the change, yeah. Will you get a receipt for the kids? Yeah, <laughs> I will do that. By the way, what, what I want to say is that uh, now we have to focus on new products, on new solutions, and we have to uh, do that also for the IT that we can provide this new solution because we will invent cars for this. These are my kids, I'm very proud of them, and uh, we have to build products for that. And on the left side you see this new ID. I, I don't know who has the chance to see it in Paris. Uh, this is our new electric car for the future, and that's what we want to achieve in the future. Yeah. Um, back to our developers, to our car developers, the really guys say. Uh, develop our awesome cars. Let's have a look at what happened in the product development in a digital enterprise. Starting in the early 90s, uh, we, have, we have a drawing board. Then in the 80s, something awesome happened. Uh, CID, computer aided design, will become into our company. Then in 1995, we have the 3D modeling and design, and today we have virtual reality. Really cool things that this guys added. We really have uh, some solutions based on virtual reality in our company and uh, there are some uh, awesome things on YouTube you can try that in. But uh, virtual reality is uh, also another thing that in the past we uh, developed cars, we produced cars, we made bare metal cars. Yeah, I'm driving against the wall and find it out what, what kind of things are broken. This is very expensive by the way. And uh, now we also do it virtual. That means we need a huge HPC power. Uh, we have more virtual cars than in the past. But what will happen in the nearly future? There will be uh, autonomous development and production. That means not a human will develop something and not a human will produce something. I have a short sample. Here you can see a bicycle, and these are developed by the computer. Based on an algorithm, uh, developed by human, for sure, but the computer will do that. Yeah, they will develop this bicycle based on different uh, algorithm, and also is it stable enough, and all the things. And on the end, there will be a, a product developed by the computer. And this bicycle can be produced by a computer, robot, and so on. And this business already changed our, our game. And uh, our answer is we built up several labs all around the world. We have a data lab in Munich. Uh, these guys are care about the big data issue. Um, this is awesome. What kind of data do we have? And, the really, and, and this is our data. Yeah? It's our data from our customers and uh, very interesting things. We have the Digi Lab in Berlin. These guys are my uh, software development, really awesome. We have a lab in San Francisco. We have the Ideation Hub, and we have the Smart Production Lab. These guys are care about the things that happen in our factory on the assembly line. Robot communication, IoT solutions, all the things. And uh, the virtual engineering labs, these guys are make these fancy glasses and uh, do something with them. But we have several more. We opened something, in, uh, someone in, in Beijing. I heard that we also go to Barcelona with these labs. And these labs are little startups. Some are really huge startups, but uh, startups. And they also uh, located in a different location, not just in our headquarter in Wolfsburg. And they really, uh, I would say they really act like a startup. But with that, a challenge will come. The core B model IT. That means we have the mode one and we have the mode two IT. And that, that is really a challenge because uh, you have to ensure that the experience that these guys are made, you can adapt to uh, the existing world, I would say. Yeah? Um, I will come later to this point 
again, because from my point of view, it's very, very important that you have a solution for that. And the solution is not, this is my point of view, to separate them. Um, you find a way to adapt the ideas from the mode two to the mode one, but there are also a lot of things that you can adapt from the mode one to the mode two as well. This is our infrastructure roadmap in the Volkswagen Group. That, I, that means we started with, uh, uh, in the past, you see some uh, operation systems, they are still existing. Um, somebody asked me what kind of hardware and operating system do you have in your data center? We have everything. Yeah? Every nice sales guy has sold us uh, technology, and we have everything. We have a lot of bare metal servers, and, and for sure, all these guys are <coughs> told me, yeah, HP Rix is the best in the world, and I need it, and I'm familiar with that, and we need it in the future as well. But now we make the step, and uh, we develop a new standard application platform based on x86. We have the key VM as the virtualization layer on top, and the Red Hat Linux, and this will be our standard application platform for the, I will call, mode one application. It's a really huge step here. Yeah. And then we start our cloud project uh, based on OpenStack. We developed a, or we implement, implemented a private cloud, but we also focused on the hybrid cloud approach. We also have a talk with several public cloud providers uh, to adapt them to our solution. Yeah, short overview of the project. As I already mentioned, we started two years ago with this first step, the standard virtualization. And we started with our cloud project one and a half year ago. It is not really a long time. And uh, we are very successful with step one with an OpenStack IRS platform. Um, after that, we are finished last year. With that, we go live with them. Uh, we have a new data center in our headquarter in Wolfsburg, and we scale out in this new data center during this year. And then in the step three, we also put our peer, or we make the decision for our pass layer to this uh, Cloud Foundry from Pivotal. We put it on top of our IIS solution. And <clears throat> now we're in the situation that we, in the step four, that means the global rollout and also to develop new products on this cloud. Um, yeah, and uh, we also have uh, application running on our cloud. Uh, Tillman uh, showed in the yesterday uh, presentation one of them, and uh, yeah, really awesome. We, uh, the guys are really like our solution, and I remember very well when we have the, the discussion, uh, how many nodes do we need to start, and um, do we really need this? Today we are overcommitted, that it is, and uh, we also want to scale out uh, our world. But uh, to say something more about the details, that's why Tillman here, Tillman. Yeah, um, so yeah, we are, as uh, um, Holger pointed out, uh, at the start of a journey. Um, we do have in Wolfsburg a couple of uh, productive stages. Um, <coughs> uh, other brands uh, uh, do um, uh, cloud installations which are focused on other uh, things like Hadoop and, and things. So we, in total we come to uh, five productive stages. We have QA as well and development. Um, as of May um, we had a um, capacity of 150 servers, um, roughly a terabyte of, uh, a petabyte of, uh, I don't get used to petabytes. Uh, sorry about this. The storage guys are laughing there. Yeah. <laughs> you are the server guy, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, 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 really. <laughs> but these borders are will be, will be not will there in the, in the future. Yeah. So okay. There will be uh, blurred lines, yeah. Uh, so roughly a petabyte of uh, self storage and uh, over 250 uh, tenants running. As uh, Olga pointed out, um, we are very happy with the IRS uh, solution uh, we have from Arantis. Um, we do have a structured pass layer uh, with uh, Cloud Foundry, uh, Pivotal Cloud Foundry, which is running quite well as well. Um, so uh, quite happy. And um, Holger said this as well, it's not the only cloud business we do. We have a 
a team dedicated to hi hybrid cloud uh, solutions because we are fully aware that we that we will not uh, fulfill uh, any demands uh, we by, uh, on our own. This is just not possible, uh, and uh, from various point of view, point of views. That's right. I can. I Please, let me come a little bit back to, to this discussion with the storage and the server. I will tell you a story. When we, when we start with the project, we, we have to pick up some, some guys from the, I would say, from the line organization. And the first <coughs> discussion that we have, what is Ceph? It's belong to the storage guys, or it's belong to the server guys. The storage guys told me, hey, uh, this are disk, and disk is directly in the server. This is, this is uh, scary things. Uh, we need our ZAN, we need our NAS. This is they have nothing to do with storage. This, this could be uh, happened by the server guys. And the server guys comes, uh, as storage guys, that I, I, I'm not familiar with that, and uh, go away. And by the way, this is software. Uh, what's that, and where we put it in our line organization and we really have struggled with that and uh, but we find a solution I will talk that later on yeah. so um, uh, this uh, uh, this building block uh, Lego kind of thing should uh, should tell you that there is more uh, to the whole cloud business than OpenStack OpenStack is a, uh, is a vital part of uh, of our uh, private cloud uh, thing but there is Lots of uh, lots more, um, <clears throat> and this also uh, shows you <clears throat> that the traditional, quite strict lines between storage and network and servers um, they get blurred and firewalls as well. So many think, firewalls. Many many firewalls. <laughs> lots of them. Um, IDS, IPS. So um, they get blurred. Um, and we had to uh, adapt our operational model to, to it, and we are still doing uh, this adaption. <clears throat> but um, it becomes uh, more and more apparent uh, that we will have more functions in one team. But this team is not dedicated uh, to the cloud, and this is a point which is um, uh, dear to both of us, we will um, deploy people in <coughs> in mode one in traditional IT and in mode two at the same time for um, for various reasons. One reason is that we need the expertise uh, of these people in their special field, like being it networking, being it firewalling, being storage or or servers. <coughs> this is one. Reason. The other reason is that we strongly want to infect um, people uh, with good techniques uh, in the cloud, like configuration management, all these things. And um, we are still a bit fighting. No, it's not fighting. We are struggling uh, uh, what to color these building blocks. But, uh, but we do a good job, I think, all of them. And there are a lot of people here on here who, who, who participate in this job. Um, so it's, a, it's an awesome journey, and I'm, I'm proud being, um, uh, being surrounded by, uh, by a lot of cool guys. Yeah, and uh, this um, should tell you that it's <coughs> not about, uh, uh, not about uh, OpenStack alone. We do have Cloud Foundry. By the way, uh, Volkswagen is now a member of uh, the Cloud Foundry Foundation as well as of the uh, OpenStack Foundation. <coughs> we do have um, uh, Elba solutions. We, have, we will have DNS as a service, which at present comes from Avi. Um, we do have uh, DB as a service, or we are implementing it. So there are lots of services, um, and um, in the undercloud we have networking, quite traditional uh, moving packets from one from one server to another. Um, we have OpenStack, we have monitoring, logging, all these things which used to be a, a separate department, even a separate department or a separate separate team, and now they somehow merge, and the system is getting very, very huge, 
quite complicated, but manageable, which uh, strikes me a lot. It, it somehow does work. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm both glad and with, at times scared. Uh, but what this, uh, is, this is about is that we need a lot of add-ons and all of them need to be installed and they need to be managed and there, uh, there needs to be somebody who is responsible for this. That's right. Thanks. Thanks, Simon, for that. And Next steps, uh, yeah, we will grow a lot. Um, that's why we talk with hardware vendors a lot. Um, next step is to, uh, uh, we, are, uh, we have, for various reasons, uh, uh, taken the decision to have a mul uh, multi-cloud uh, uh, environment, not one cloud stretched over, uh, uh, over several um, <coughs> locations. Um, one is that it's easier to, ma uh, to manage um, the resilience is, if done correctly, higher. The next step is that we will, uh, at the headquarters of one of our brands, um, namely Škoda, in Mlada Boleslav in the Czech Republic, uh, uh, do the next considerably larger uh, cloud. It's supposed to have roughly 150 compute nodes and um, lots of storage. I know that it's better. Uh, so I try to memorize. Um, and we will go for Asia, quite likely Singapore, and then uh, America. Uh, but uh, locations have not been decided. Right now, there are some assumptions we are working on, but uh, locations have not been decided for sure. So that by end of uh, uh, next year, we, uh, we will be able to, uh, to provide uh, geo resilience for, for, for applications who are prepared to use it and take appropriate me measures to, uh, to do this. For our private cloud environment, and we want yeah. to achieve this, or to fulfill the demand that we come also with our uh, hybrid cloud, that means public cloud approach that we have. So, yeah, and that will be, uh, I, I think that we will have this solution uh, until the end of this year, that we have the possibility to use uh, public cloud uh, resources uh, like we want to do it professional in the future. It does not mean that the developer guys are raise their credit card and uh, buy something and uh, start to develop already an uh, enterprise ready approach, I would say. Thanks, Thurman, for that. Um, our experiences, I guess you already know some of these points, but you have to uh, imagine uh, or you have to keep in mind that we are not an IT company. We are a car manufacturer. But the role of the IT are changing now in our company extremely. And some of this experience are based on this situation that we had in the past, and now uh, the game has changed. First of all, when you're developers. They are one of them. Hi, Ricardo. Yeah, and we, we, we uh, really uh, are close in touch with these guys in the very early point. That means um, you when you think about what kind of service should be delivered to these guys, you have to talk with them. You have to catch them very early. And we also have, we have a lot of internal developers, but they are focused, as uh, I already mentioned, to the mode one. We have some developers, they are still familiar with uh, mode two application, with cloud native application, 12 factor apps, and so on. And you have to identify these guys, catch these guys, bring them to the team, and don't separate them. Yeah, as I already mentioned, uh, we have no longer the storage guys, we have no longer the network guys or the compute guys or the developer guys. We also think we, we develop products for our private cloud up to now and we also going the way that means uh, you build it, you run it. That means these guys who develop this product, this team will be also responsible for the operation. When you're developers, uh, they are really, really nice guys. Um, cloud first as an enterprise strategy. Yeah. It makes no sense to deliver, uh, I would say, uh, infrastructure 
very fast, very soon when you have no strategy regarding to de develop your application. And in the Volkswagen Group, the decision is made, we follow the strategy that are called cloud first. That means all new application for the new business models that we need, I already mentioned it, will be de developed on cloud native, uh, or will we have a cloud native approach. Communicate cloud initiatives to IT and business. Do it every time. Do it again and again and again and again. And uh, be, but please start small and scale fast. That means uh, uh, very often it, it, it happens that uh, when our business departments or our IT guys talk about clouds, uh, you have uh, really awesome discussions. What does cloud means? Yeah. You have the situation that uh, when, when the project are, have the, the operational co costs are too, too high and uh, I cannot uh, reach my project plan, hmm, what I have to do, ah, cloud. Go, uh, go into the cloud, we made the decision, go into the cloud and everything will be fine. And you have to communicate with these guys again and again and uh, describe them what, what is our cloud approach, what does cloud means. And we also want to provide our solution, not just to our developers, guys. We uh, call it cloud for everybody. That means we will also uh, will offer our cloud solutions for our business departments. That means our sales guys, our uh, developers, or car developers, and all these things, Arch Air as well. And have an answer to the question, why do we need a private cloud? I had a lot of discussion regarding this, yeah. But uh, it will be, I'm sure that you have enough answer of that. Okay, but you have to be prepared. There was yesterday, there was a lot of some really awesome uh, presentation regarding this issue and uh, yeah, you find a lot of answers. Um, the most important thing from my point of view and based on our experience that we had is take care about your operational model. It is easy to install an open stack installation to make it up and running, but the operational is the thing that you have to care about it. What you can see here, uh, problems occurred by 95% of private cloud approach, the failure to change the operational model. When you have no answer to that, you will fail. And uh, what we have done is uh, we built up our, our environment with our operational guys. Don't mind these guys, they are, uh, make our Linux servers up and running during the day. These guys have built up our environment. And this is our own guys, because I need this experience in the, in the company to adapt all the things uh, to the existing ones. And uh, it is maybe a hard approach, because uh, we had also some discussion regarding, hey, why we have a cloud project, yeah, they are a lot of uh, well-known companies in the world and uh, all of them are sitting in my office and told me, yeah, you just have to uh, provide us a little bit of space in your data center and we will make everything. We will install it, we will run it, and you don't have to care about it. Um, to be honest, um, uh, some of them cannot really deliver. Um, you have to, uh, in, in this phase that we are in, in this stage, and we made the decision to uh, make it with our own guys. And uh, yeah, it was a success together with Mirantos. They made, made a really awesome, awesome job. Uh, they're sitting here on the front. Thank you guys again. And uh, they are also responsible for the operational things. This is very, very important. Make the operational, or my suggestion is, make your operation in the very first phase by your own. Maybe later you can you can uh, do something, think, some things with, with a partner or something like that, but you have to make your experience in the very early phase with, with your own guys. Because we also think about, uh, we have several uh, network zones in our existing world, and uh, we also think about uh, just to install an open stack environment in, in the application zone that these guys can raise up the test servers uh, by our own. And that's mean we have to transfer the knowledge that we have uh, that we uh, learned in the mode two, we want to adapt to the mode one, and we have some things, uh, especially automation, is the thing that we learned that we also adapt to this one. Then we don't separate it, 
in this area, the mode one and mode two, we put these guys together, have one team, but this team is also responsible for the operation and for the development of new products of our cloud, like DNS as a service and so on. Very, very important. Uh, when you forget everything what I said in the last minutes, the one thing you have to remember is take care about your operational model. Uh, and make this experience with your own guys and adapt these into the mode one environment. Because um, in the very first approach of a cloud project, you will save your money in the mode one, not in the mode two. Yeah? When you can adapt this experience that you have with the mode one. And a further very, very important thing, involve your legal and purchasing guys from the first day. Also, uh, I saw yesterday a speech from a uh, US company, uh, how they did open source, and uh, they raised also the, the challenges that we have, and um, I, never f I don't find the, the, the legal things on the uh, slides, and they told me yeah, that, that was not a really an issue at our side. But for a European company and the German company, the legal issue, you have to take care about it. It means uh, pick these guys up, go in communication with them, because it's also a new world for them. Yeah? And on the end of the day, you need a contact, you need a signed contract, and um, these guys also have to agree with them. Do you want to, something to add? No, no. Uh, yeah. Okay. But it uh, could be uh, a success when you talk with them guys again and again and again. We have, a, we have an, 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 an regular meeting with uh, legal guys, purchasing guys. Uh, security. Security, data security guys, all things to, to share the experience that we have to learn more about how, uh, how does it, uh, how does a cloud like to run and open, open source, of course, for larger enterprises like us is open source uh, uh, a chance to do something like uh, save money. Uh, you know all this uh, fancy license models of uh, some uh, database. So, okay, I will not go too in deep in this, in this issue. But um, open source is really an, an issue in larger companies like us, and it's not so easy like it sounds that you use it, install it, and you don't have to care about the open source product that you use. You, you, you have to legal, uh, you have to talk with the legal guys and the purchasing guys as well. Yeah, and. Uh, that was our experiences. I would say thank you. Do you have something to add? Yeah, uh, thanks for, uh, for giving us the opportunity to, to have, have this talk. Um, we obviously are prepared to uh, answer any questions you have. If you do have questions, they will be put on the video and there's a mic here. So please come forward uh, to ask any questions. Up to the microphone here, okay. So, because they're putting this on video yeah. and uh, could, could you? Or you raise your speech. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, okay. I guess my question is about the operational model. Uh, yeah. Because uh, the different types. So, how do you know the So what we do at present is that we, as Holger pointed out, involve all uh, the expertise from all uh, from all areas. Uh, so normally, a network guy will be part of the operations team, let's say two days a week, and for the other uh, for the other days he will do his normal networking uh, job. The same for storage and so on. And they have uh, the responsibility to be some kind of on-duty call. So even if they are not on-site, the operations uh, there, they will be uh, there with uh, on call with their, ex with their expert uh, expertise, like uh, like networking or firewalling. Um, and so far, this did work 
Well, um, obviously you have to improve on, on all things, uh, uh, but um, what I think is, um, is crucial to this is that they, that they get a broader mind, that they will be involved even if they are a networking guy into how does a compute node work or how does the MQ, uh, the Rabbit MQ works in, in this. And so um, this was the, uh, the answer we have at present. Obviously, we, we, evolve, we want to evolve uh, uh, with our growth and with yep. our experience, but this is an uh, answer we do have now. Does this answer your question? I, I, I will add something. Uh, it is not as easy as it sounds to, to, to just uh, put this network guys, bring it to the team, and the, he, he, will, he will solve all network issues. They will have other network issues than in the existing one, and they, these guys also have to care about some something more regarding the application, how does it run, and so yeah. And the, uh, I, uh, Very often it happened uh, when, we, when we have an, uh, uh, um, an incident, and uh, I heard from the network guys, the network is, is fine. Everything is up and running, everything's okay, but the application not, 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 not work again. And then you, you also have to care about these things and you use your existing experiences and knowledge from the network and add this uh, or combine this with this application know-how. This is very important. Don't let, let this guys alone in his technology they, they have to be open-minded also for, for, I would say, for the upper OZ level, I would say, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent point, it teaches, uh, uh, it teaches people also to take responsibility for the whole product and not only for, for the sub part, so to speak. But, but you, so do you need the, the right guys? I can remember very well when we started with the project, yeah? we started, oh, what, what, what will be our first thing that means uh, Oh we, need, uh, oh, we need training, guys. We need training sessions, training sessions. The first thing that, that I did is uh, we opened YouTube to all employees for this guy. So they go to YouTube uh, and find out your private session. Yeah? And that, that, that's what the approach and the guys are starting now. But now, now they happen, these guys have told me, yeah, oh, I have a problem. I go to, the, to Google or YouTube or all this uh, fancy uh, information on the internet and say, oh, no other has uh, this problem before. Now we have a situation that we have to uh, find a solution by our own. Okay. So, could you? Yeah. so when you decided to go for cloud, what were the various alternatives that you considered and why did you select OpenStack? Okay. Uh, the, the question was uh, why we select OpenStack and why we go to cloud and uh, what were the alternatives. To be honest, there were no alternatives to go to go this way because there are, what are the demands? To deliver very fast infrastructure solutions yeah, and uh, there, from my point of view, there is no alternative. The, the, the one thing is to go to the public clouds, yeah, but as I already mentioned it, 6% um, um, on, uh, on uh, the companies that use clouds have just a private cloud installation. 18% have an just a uh, public cloud uh, approach, and <coughs> the, uh, the other guys are, have a hybrid cloud uh, approach. And, um, we think that um, with the uh, open stack, we find the best solution that we can have uh, for us because our strategy is open source. We want to start with open source. We want to avoid uh, vendor lock-in. This is also a strategy of us. And yeah, and uh, the first connection with the open stack community was awesome. Um, we have some doubts if a, if a huge enterprise like us uh, belongs to an open source community like the open stack community, but we are feel friendly welcomed and we have good uh, conversation with them and we are sure that uh, the product himself uh, is the right thing for us. So, uh, to, to add to this, um, for, we had some, some projects before which had cloud in the, uh, at least in the title of the project. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm reluctant to, uh, to say uh, something about vendors, but they didn't get, uh, they didn't work too well. Um, so what was quite apparent to, to Holger, to his boss, to, to me, is that we should go for OpenStack. Uh, because it's, as a broad community, uh, by far the, uh, uh, the largest player and the one we, we see with most future inside pro 
uh, private cloud installations and also uh, hybrid as well. Um, so we focused on decision taking OpenStack and then what exactly do we do with uh, OpenStack. So the question whether or not to do OpenStack wa wasn't really a question in this because we, we knew it had to be open because all the closed shops, they didn't work too well. Does it answer? As Holger said, we are doing both. We are doing both in parallel, but there are, for instance, uh, data protection, uh, data protection things, which force us to have um, uh, a private cloud for employee and uh, customer data at least medium term. And as I already said, we have a lot of data. We we own a lot of data from cars from customers and so on we want to own the data by uh, we want to have this data by by us and uh, this is one of the things that we never think about to just have a hybrid uh, and public cloud approach uh, we are sure from the beginning that we need a private one but uh, the mix uh, is for sure the answer to to this question yeah. are you also working on iot related projects yeah for sure for sure iot is the uh, most important thing that we that we are discussing uh, at this time in the, in the company uh, they, we are produced 10 million cars per, per year and uh, most of them are connected now and this are just one IoT issue as I told you uh, that we have this uh, production lab these guys are care about all the things that happen in the assembly line regarding IoT and so on this is really a huge issue and we also discuss uh, what will be the, the IoT platform in the future this is really discussion that, that, that is in the company Yeah, it could be. Yeah, for sure. So, as we are quite the end of the time slot, uh, are there any further questions? Then doesn't seem to be the case. Thanks again for giving us the opportunity and give a warm, warm uh, greet to all the uh, operations guys here. Yeah, can you stand up, please? Can you stand up, guys? Uh, yeah. These guys will make it happen. Okay, thanks.